When I set out to do the first G1, it was about five years after I'd taken over, and I'd learned a lot during that five years. We really wanted something that began to pull all of the different threads together that I'd learned. G1 and now G1 Mark II really allows all of the purest expressions of rail to come forward. This is a piece that uses an ultra lightweight carbon fiber driver. It's a 12 inch diameter driver and the entire thing is one monocoque shell. The amplifier is a big 600 watt per channel monoblock, a class AB design. Puts out enormous amounts of current, yet at idle it's very, very efficient. We brought this together in this beautiful curvilinear cabinet, and the cabinet is really designed not just to be pretty, but it also deals with that critical back wave. As the driver goes back into the cabinet, it produces a compression wave, and you have to deal with that somehow as a designer. This particular curve winds up setting up a whole set of incident reflections, and you just wind up with something that's very, very quiet and pure. When we set out to do a design, we always focus on getting the driver right. My old mentor, Franco Serblin, taught me that if you get the driver right, everything else in a project becomes very, very simple. And he's right. When we're dealing with a subwoofer, we're talking about immense amounts of force. So this is something that needs to be able to travel two inches forward and back in order to really supply the energy, the air movement, the people demand of big pieces. The amplifier on our reference series are quite different than our usual series. On the ref, we have filter boards that are twice as fast. The result of that is every event that happens is so quick. The transients are steeper, spaces are blacker, precision of localization of instruments if you're listening to a really high quality recording is more precise. It's just remarkable. I think they may be the fastest filters ever produced. From that we go into an extremely high current amplifier. The 600 watt class AB amplifier that we use in this is so beyond over spec. It's capable of running for years and years because it's just not stressed at all. The power transformer is almost a 1kW transformer so the amplifier simply loafs along and the result is something that can go down exceptionally low with very 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 good control. It's tremendously dynamic and yet at the same time it's very quiet and resolved. It gives you both the big peaks and the delicate small stuff at the bottom. The cabinetry on the G1 is absolutely beautiful. This curvilinear sidewalls to the cabinetry, the chamfers on the front, it, it, it's all just a riot of very high gloss lacquers and beautiful reflection points. Even the badging is lovely. But you need to understand that the physical purpose of all this is really to deal with the back wave coming off the driver. To do that, this curvature is not just pretty, it's very, very specific. I remember when we did the original prototype, we had two different versions that were off by less than an eighth of an inch, perhaps a millimeter and a half, top to bottom from the entire front to the back. One sounded phenomenal, the other was dead as a dog. It was incredible to me, the lesson that acoustics is that powerful. In addition to that, we have bracing that is very much borrowed from the musical instrument world, but those of you who run ships or, or sailboats will understand it as well. You've got spars that run the top and down the entire height of this. There's a backbone spar, and again, another one here. This is all done with marine grade ply. It's extremely expensive, but it's what it takes to really break up and control the resonance points in a cabinet this complex. As you can see, the G1 Mark II comes normally with these beautiful aluminum feet. However, there's an option to stack these, and when you do, you must remove the feet and you reuse the supplied hardware and go to full stacking rails underneath. So again, the feet come off, front to back curvilinear um, rails come with a special kit, and it both stabilizes the rail and also allows it not to scratch the unit that is below. So the purpose to stacking is interesting. We typically stack in um, three or more. The purpose to three, in, in, and in general, the entire premise of stacking isn't to make more bass. A single one of these in a normal room probably makes as much bass as you need. A stereo pair certainly does and evens out all the room modes. Why do we need six? The answer is very simple. Bass doesn't exist on the floor in real life. Base exists in three-dimensional space. So it doesn't matter whether it's a special effect like a hand grenade being thrown into your foxhole in a movie, or if it's a big piece of music, base exists dimensionally and vertically very specifically. So when that, when that hand grenade blows up, it doesn't just ripple along the floor, it expresses outward in a vertical dimension as well. So the G1 Mark II has a lovely remote control that was designed just for this unit. We offer all the controls that it would normally be on the rear panel and we do it in such a way that it feels exactly like rear panel controls. So they've got these beautiful little individual detents 
for gain, for crossover, for point one gain. And we also allow you to adjust phase from the listing position. And the reason that's useful is phase at the listing position can be a little different than it is in other places in the room. And what's important is that you be able to immediately identify which direction 0 or 180 is louder. The, the direction that's louder is louder because it's actually doing exactly what your speaker is doing. The two couple up and you get a louder output. When you go in the opposite direction, you wind up canceling bass and so you wind up with a, with a less lower output. This is um, just a beautiful piece of design work. The LED emitter is right here on top. This is your um, crossover control. Here's your gain control for, point, for low level and uh, high level. And your 0.1 LFE is over here. Allows you to dial everything in and be done with. It's a great piece and it also it's just a lovely feel. It fits perfectly in the palm of your hand, sort of snuggles down in there, and it's very comfortable to use. So G1 Mark II was developed after we'd actually finished off the number 25. We'd learned all these fantastic lessons on the 25 that were going to be our jumping off point for the next generation. And we turned around and immediately reapplied it to the G1. It allows you to couple up with really state-of-the-art speakers, whether it's in singles, pairs, which is much more common, or what we euphemistically refer to as six packs, reference line arrays stacked three high, which allow you to come and, and, and really couple beautifully with the full space of huge concert halls and state-of-the-art loudspeakers. The G1 Mark II is a complete reference piece, 12-inch driver, monocoque carbon fiber cone, 600 watt per channel class AB amplifier with just torrents of current behind it. This is a great piece that really scales well into real human beings' lives. Thank you.